You know, I, I was going to open this asking what would your uh, preferred mutant power be, except the whole point of mutant powers is you don't get to pick what it is, so that's a pointless exercise. Hey folks, so yeah, watching Dark Phoenix and then ranking the X-Men movies kind of put me in an X-Men headspace, and so I'm rolling with it, and I want to talk about what Marvel, Disney should be doing with X-Men. And no, I'm not going to talk specific storylines, I'm not going to talk casting, I'm not going to talk anything like that, it's just one very simple note. X-Men should be a TV show, not a film series. Now, Obviously, the first thing that people are going to come at me with is, is there have been X-Men TV shows. And let's, for the moment, set aside, like, the 90s cartoon, and what, which I know everyone's, like, super nostalgic for, but I'm sorry, it does not hold up worth a darn. Opening credit music is amazing, but, like, the show as a whole hasn't aged well. But, like, I'm setting that aside, and even X-Men Evolution, but, like, there have been recent stuff. There's Legion, which is great. There's The Gifted, which... I never got around to seeing, but I heard pretty good things about. But that's not what I'm talking about. Because that's taking elements, things, certain characters, certain bits of the X-Men universe and making a TV show out of that. No. I'm talking the main series, the main franchise, the characters people know. I'm talking about Wolverine, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler. Beast, Colossus, Kitty Pride, Professor Xavier, they should be on television, not in film. And I, yeah, I will explain why I think this is the case. So there are a number of things that get lost when things get translated from any medium into any other medium. And specifically, if we're talking about comic book to film, there are some characters and some properties that take a slight more of a hit than others do. Now, some make the transition surprisingly unscathed, and if we're even going with an X-Men, Deadpool did pretty well, but Deadpool is an anomaly, like, within almost everything. But the thing is, what, honestly, even the X-Men comics seem to have long forgotten, and a big part of why there was often a bit of an issue with the films, at, look, looking at it as a series for me, is that the reason the comics, at their best, were so good was because it wasn't non-stop events. At least, it wasn't until about the 90s where everything went to hell. But you look back at the 70s and the 80s, the kickoff of Giant Size X-Men, basically up in, up through... Liefeld showing up and introducing X-Force and things starting to go downhill. I think most people would actually tend to agree, unless they have serious, you know, nostalgia blindness going on, that the 70s and the 80s were the heyday for the X-Men. And if you think that's my nostalgia blindness talking, I will point out I wasn't reading comics in the 70s and the 80s. I wasn't even born in the 70s. My comic book reading with, well, in general, and with the X-Men specifically, was the 90s. If it was going to be nostalgic for anything, it would be for that. But 90s X-Men friggin' suck! So, I don't think I'm talking not a nostalgia blindness here. But what was so good about the X-Men during that time period is that not everything was a big continuous event. You had some, you had some big iconic stories, many of which have been innate from the films. This was the period of time that gave us Days of Future Past. It gave us the Dark Phoenix, Phoenix Saga. It gave us God Loves Man Kills. All these, the Sentinels, all these things that, you know, all, all these movies are pulling their cues from, they're from the 80s, from the 70s. But the reason those stories worked and why not all of them worked in film and why Dark Phoenix especially never had a chance is that because these are ensemble stories about young people, it's a soap opera more than anything else. And you need the downtime, you need the connective tissue, you need the relationships between the characters. And when all you do is cover big event ty type stuff, which is basically what always happens with movies, then you're missing that. 
When I did my review of Dark Phoenix, I said they're missing a movie in between Apocalypse and this. Now, granted, both Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix sucked, but set that aside for, for a second and just look at them as narratives. At the end of Apocalypse, the team assembled, the team, had, like as we were going to see them in the next film, basically assembled for the very first time. Gene and Scott were just barely starting out their relationship. Next film starts, and the, team, and the whole thing is about the team breaking apart. That is no weight because we haven't seen the team be together. But that makes for a dull film. Film, or at least that seems to be the mentality of the filmmakers. And now, granted, that was under Fox. Disney will do their own thing. But admittedly, a, a film where everything, where the team at least is gelling and coherent and everything is fine between them for the most part, not a lot of people are going to make that film. But that is the kind of thing you do in a TV show. You build up to your big events for your finales. But leading into that... You have the little interactions. You build the relationships between the characters. You get to focus on somebody other than Wolverine, Mystique, Magneto, or Professor Xavier. Because 12 films in that series, well, 10 if we take Deadpool out of it, because again, he's anomalous. And honestly... For as many other characters just showed up in those films, those are the only ones who ever mattered. And that's a shame, because the strength of X-Men is in the ensemble. It's the same reason that Star Trek works so much better as a TV show. And that's not to say there haven't been good Star Trek films. There have been. But the reason Star Trek works as a show, by design and by nature, no matter what Star Trek show we're talking about, no matter which how you feel about which ones are better than others, the reason it belongs on television is because you need to be able to dedicate an hour, an episode, to give us this relationship, this character, this dynamic, move this thing over here and see what changes just for the course of this one story and then put it back to the status quo. You can do that with a TV show in a way you can't do with film because film demands size and scope, especially with summer blockbusters, which pretty much comic book superhero movies almost always are, even if they're not released in the summer, they're still summer blockbusters for all intents and purposes. And they won't do, they'll try and have those small moments worked in here or there, but it can't just be side moments. Not if you're going to do X-Men, what makes X-Men great at its best. If you're going to do that justice, it can't just be little side moments. It, it has to be more than just Rogue and Bobby Drake having this little quirky little romance going on. You need to develop it. You need to have weight. So that when you do something like Dark Phoenix, Jean losing control matters because we care about her. We care about the relationships. We care about the damage being done to the characters who we love. But we never get a chance to know these people in the film. Not the, not the ensemble cast, just a handful of the core members. And again, you can get away with that. And some of those films are good. I genuinely love some of them. But... If you're truly going to represent X-Men, you need more space. You need more space and time than film allows. And this is not the only franchise I think about. That I think this about. Like, I think if they were ever to have the idea to remake Harry Potter, it should be done as a TV show. Because those films are also quite good, and I think excellent adaptations for what they are, by and large. But the one thing that's missing and the one thing that always was the first thing to get cut, especially in the later films in that franchise, is the classroom stuff. The kind of stuff that you could have in a TV series. The kind of stuff that gives it the feel of the school setting, which, and people tend to forget this, X-Men is also supposed to be a school setting. But we never get the feel of that because nothing is ever happening at the school. There's never class. There's never the older people teaching, like maybe one scene. But that's supposed to be the setting. That's supposed to be the default, the status quo. We almost never saw it in the films because they were too busy off fighting Magneto again. But you've got to have the downtime in between. Otherwise, the big moments don't have the same weight. And in X-Men, in the comics, those moments do have weight when contrasted with the smaller moments. 
And I think this is something that, to some degree, impacts almost every superhero franchise because all these characters in the comics have smaller stories that never make the films because the films are all about the big stories. Now, how much of a detriment that is to the translation of the characters, I think that varies on a case-by-case -case basis. Some of them, I think, get away with it fairly well. But X-Men, you really need the downtime, the small stories, the small moments, the recovery. Like, I... I <laughs> if you've never checked out the... Um, Council of Geeks podcast, which you probably haven't, most people haven't, but I covered every issue of the 90s event Executioner's Song, and it was terrible. This was a 90s X-Men crossover event, and it was awful. But you know what was great at the very end? There's a coda. There's an epilogue. There's an unwinding. There was an issue of the comic after this whole thing was done where the characters just decompressed, reconnected, talked to each other, tried to help each other through what they'd just been through and be sure everyone was okay. And that was by far the best thing to come out of that. That was a great issue. And that... And like an entire issue devoted to it, not a couple pages, the whole issue. And that is the kind of thing that X-Men needs and is missing. And seeing the size and the scope of some of the stuff that Disney and Marvel are planning for Disney+, Plus, I don't think I'm completely out of my mind to think maybe they would actually be willing to do this. I mean, they probably won't. X-Men is a big enough name, they're going to want to put it on the big screen. And... It wouldn't be completely out of the realm of possibility at this point with Kevin Feige running everything now for there to be the proper crossover between the TV and streaming shows and the movies that we always wanted and never got. So maybe it's possible that there is a TV show that has the students, the day-to-day -day stuff, the interconnections, and when they get to something like Dark Phoenix, they make the movie. Maybe. I'm a little more skeptical about that idea. I'd really like it to just to find a home on TV, but I'd be open to that. But we need the space to have the quiet moments because without them, X-Men is just bombast and it gets real old real quick when that's the case. And that's why I think X-Men should be on TV or streaming, whatever, at this point. <laughs> what are your thoughts about that? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. a whole bunch of stuff to do as well. Because like, subscribe, uh, you can check out my stuff. Help me out on Patreon. That is a massive assistance. But if you uh, are not able to do so, just sharing this video around, that helps quite a bit. The almighty algorithm has deemed it so. But there are things to click on, buttons to press. They do things. But you also don't have to. I'd appreciate it. But at the end of the day, you're the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.